is happening, Fish and Friends. Welcome to another episode of Depot's Fishing. Now, I'm excited to come to you today because we're doing a little rod comparison. We're going to be looking at the Cast King Royal Legend Rod versus the Abu Garcia Veritas Rod. Both good rods, both very good rods. I've used them a, a while, but I want to start with a strength test. So what I'm going to try to do is break both these rods over my knee, and whichever one survives is going to move to round two. You ready? Snap! Out of it, that is. Come on, y'all didn't think I was actually going to break my rods, did you? We got a comparison to do here. So, the Abu Garcia Veritas compared to the Cast King Royal Legend Rod. Both awesome rods. The Veritas I've used for a couple years now. It's pretty scratched up, dinged up, beat up. The Royal Legend I got, I've used for uh, the past half of 2017. So, I've had uh, a good experience with both of these rods. Now, let's just start at the bottom and work our way up. Both of these rods have the EVA handles, which I prefer, and I know I'll probably take heat on that, but compared to uh, cork. I'm not a big fan of cork. It's all right. I just don't like that it kind of degrades after a while and gets all pulling apart and cracks, and I don't know. I just like the feel of EVA more. I feel like once it gets wet, it's, it's not as big of an issue in the hand. So both of these rods did well there. The EVA on both of these feels good. Um, now down at the bottom, one thing I do like better about the Royal Legend is they have a, a rubber piece here. The Veritas, as you can see here, has a metal bottom, and as you drop it on rocks or clean on anything, it's pretty noisy. Now, that's not a you know a huge issue, but I do like that the uh, the Royal Legend is silent. The Abu Garcia Veritas has a reel seat that is completely exposed, a, a kind of skeleton reel seat. Your hand is in contact with the blank, which is nice. And this, I wish every rod that I had had the rod trigger like this. When I cup my hand around it, and I'll put a reel on both of these to show you what I'm talking about up here too, but when I cup my hand around this, this fits me perfect. I know when I set a hook, it's not going to slip off. It's got just a little trigger there I love. Now, other people do not like this. They say it, it feels kind of big. I know my uh, old man says it, you know, it felt way too big. He preferred the trigger on the Royal Legend. Now, this one's not bad. It comes to my pinky right here. Some of these are really small and it digs into my pinky, but this does come past it, so no complaints on it. I just, I really like that. I wish every rod that I had had that trigger. The blank on this is partially exposed, so I do like that, so at least you can feel it on your pinky. Now, I'm a big line guy. When I put my reel on my um, rod and hold it, I always hold with my finger up in front on the line anyway. So as I'm doing this, you can see that when I screw down on this is really easy. My fingers are right up here. You can crank it down real easy and get it tight. No issues there. I love that about this and it's metal. I do have some of these with plastic um, that I've broken in the past. You tighten it down a little too much. I know I'm like the Hulk, but I'd like that this is metal so you're not gonna break it. Now, as I hold my hand on here and cup my finger over, you can see that my finger fits in here perfect. It slides right in here, this spot right here, on the rod is nice and flat and comfortable. Get out of the way. Nice and comfortable right there. I'm a big line guy. I feel the line with my finger. So I'm not huge. You can see that hardly any of my finger is touching the, the actual rod blank anyway. So to me, it's not a huge deal that all this is showing down here. I think the actual sensitivity of the rod as it goes out, coupled with feeling the line are gonna make a bigger difference than just having all this exposed. But for some people, they, they really feel that makes a difference. This one in the palm fits me better up here. Now you can see when I go to take it off, it's a very easy process. You unscrew that. Now onto the Veritas. When you screw this one on here, it's got a clicking system, which is cool. I mean, I don't, I don't need it to click to tell me it's tight, but it's kind of a cool feature. The part that gets bad is when you go to tighten it. Once you get this up here, it's really hard to get a good grip on it up under the reel. So that's one part that I, I didn't really like about this rod. It's really kind of awkward. You have to kind of flip it over and do it this way to make sure you're tight. Now, the other part that I didn't like is when I put my finger here to rest on it, my finger is right on this edge, right on this knob. And it's not the most comfortable for me when I'm holding this rod. Now down here, everything is perfect. You can see my finger stops at that. I love that trigger, but up here was not the best. You have these pretty rough, rigid screw threads up here, which I'm also not a fan of because if I'm moving my finger and moving it off back and forth, um, it's just not that comfortable. So I wish maybe they would have just elongated this a little bit and it would have completely solved that issue. Otherwise, it screws on good and sturdy. It holds it tight. No complaints in that department. As we move up, both companies did this so right. We need like a little firework. The hook keeper. 
I don't understand why companies put those little hook keepers that are just like a little U, where you actually have to take your hook and hook it in there. I can't stand those. I love these because when you when you switch rods and you just move over to a new bait, it just hooks in there. So if you have to follow up really quick, if you're fishing and you see a fish you want to follow up on, you just undo it and pitch it and go. I'm a big fan of, of these. I don't know. That's just personal preference, but I love these. And both uh, both companies did this right. Casking has the little logo there on theirs. Um, on the Abu Garcia Veritas, it's just kind of like a little skeleton wire there. But uh, I love the way they did both of those. Now, on to the part of the video where you seemingly need a college degree to understand what is going on. The modulus, the blank of the rod. What in the world is going on with all this? You see these numbers thrown around so loosely. The numbers are not industry standard. So each company has their own different rating. You might see a 30 ton rating. You might see an HM8, an IM6, an IM7, a GLX. What this rod is made out of and how it is measured is completely different across the industry. So it makes it really confusing. But in a quick nutshell, it's really just talking about the ton or the, the actual modulus, the strength of the graphite is basically giving an identifier to the rod stiffness. Now, when you get to a higher modulus or a, a higher ton, graphite rod, I'm just speaking strictly on the graphite rods, it's just meaning that you're going to get a higher ratio of stiffness to the weight of material being used. So you get a, a more stiff rod with a lighter weight, the higher you go up in the modulus. But most people think, well, I'm going to always look for a higher number here. Obviously, it's better. Well, what if you're comparing a 30 ton graphite rod to an IM6? How do those compare? What people forget is that there are different materials in the rod. It's not just like they take a tube. And if you've never seen a, how a rod's made, super interesting. You got to check it out. They basically take a whole bunch of sheets of, of graphite and they put in their own, depending on you know what the company uses, their own resins, you know, glues or other fibrous layers in between there to make up the rod. They have it in just sheets similar to this fabric. They have the resin in there, they iron it out to get it hot. They'll roll it around a steel tube, wrap that in cellophane, bake it, and that'll activate the resins in there, the glue, to make this one solid whole unit. They'll cut the cellophane off, strip this off the tube, and then add all the extras on it. So when you hear people talk about a blank, you know, or the modulus, it's just really this essentially extremely large graphite straw. Now, that's why it's interesting because you can't just base it off this number because there are different scrims or layers that are added in between the graphite uh, along with resins that may have different materials in it as well to make the whole rod. So just because you go up a number doesn't mean it's a better rod because as you go up in a higher ton or modulus rating, you're also going to get a more brittle rod. So when you see them go up, um, you know, companies go up in the number, they also have to add different things to it. So, you know, you'll hear things like, you know, uh, proprietary resin or honeycomb fiber or nano silica resin, uh, biofibers, all these things that they add to it to make it stronger. So just because it's a higher modulus doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better. So when you look at these two rods in particular, the Abu Garcia Veritas is a 30 ton graphite rod. The Casking Royale Legend is a 24 ton Torre carbon fiber construction. So most people look at the number and say, well, this rod's obviously got to be better. Well, again, this rod has different things added to it. So when you go down and look here, this has the spiral carbon core. So what's that mean? It means that they've added other things to this graphite. It's not just a, you know, a graphite rod. They've had to add other things in there. Now, in my experience with these two rods, the Royal Legend is a more sensitive rod. I was extremely surprised when I went to the scale. So I just want to show you all, we're going to lay this flat so it zeroes out. I want to show you all the weight difference between these two rods. So first up is the Abu Garcia Veritas. Stay still. All right, so we've got 144 grams on the Abu Garcia Veritas. So let's just take it off, make sure it's zero. We'll put it back on again, see if we get the same weight. No touchies. 145. Okay, 144, 145 grams. When we go to the Casking Royal Legend, I was surprised here because I would have definitely put money on the Veritas being a heavier rod. That's 158 grams just to show that it's zeroed out. And go back again for round two, 159. So 144 versus 158, 159. That was interesting to me. I would have definitely bet money that the Veritas was a heavier rod, but the Royal Legend is a little bit heavier. Now, I still feel like this is a, a little bit more sensitive rod, but that's just my opinion. As we move up, the last thing that I wanna cover on these two rods are the guides. Now, as you can see, I'm going up with the same amount. Oh, well, first guide, oh, first guide. All right. You'll notice a big difference in the guide size here. So as I'm holding these two level, 
like so. You can see there's no smoke and mirrors. The guides on the Veritas are really big, really bulky. I'm, I was not a fan of these at all. Um, the guides on the Royal Legend are Fuji guides, very smooth, a little bit lower profile. And as we move up, you can see that difference when we go to the second one. It's a little bit more pronounced. They're even there on my thumb. Whoop, come on, right here. Hey, there we go. You can see the size difference. Now these are a little bit bulky and even like when you put a rod sock on it, you notice it. They just don't feel the greatest. Now none, none of these have broke. Um, they're super strong in that aspect. I have no complaints there. They're just really big and bulky. I like the smaller, sleeker design on the Royal Legend. So last but not least, the price. Well, when I picked up this Veritas, this was a $99, basically $100 rod. The Royal Legend was a $69 or a $70 rod. So that's a $30 difference. So why have I switched over and why have I put this video out there? Well, I have not seen a lot of comparisons on this for, you know, for people to kind of get an idea of how does this rod fall in? Where does it compare? Well, for me, I obviously like that this is a less expensive rod. Now, I do like the Fuji guides on this rod better. I like the hardware and everything, the handle, all that was about even. The only thing I wish that the Royal Legend had was a little bit bigger um, trigger on here that came down just a little bit more. Now, is that a $30 feature? I don't believe so. I think this is a great all-round rod, especially for somebody looking. You often hear you know, times that, hey, if you want to get a good rod, you got to spend over $100. And I guarantee if you've you know, never owned a over $100 rod and you put one of these in your hand, you will be pleasantly surprised. Now, both of these are awesome rods. Loved them both. I've used them both a lot. That's just kind of some of the information on why I've been using this rod, why I've switched over. So I hope this helps you. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more comparisons like this, leave that information in the comments section below. Now, as always, if you have not subscribed to the Cast King channel, please do so. If you've not subscribed to my channel for more informative videos like this one, do so. Gently select the subscribe button down there. I do not want anybody smashing their phone, so do it in a very gentle manner. So as always, keep fishing fun. And no matter what, keep casting, because if you're not out there fishing, guys, you can't catch the fish. Until next time.